Alrighty, so what I have here is, well, first off, good morning. Uh, it is like 5.30 in the morning. Sorry, it is 6 in the morning. And I want to get this installed as soon as possible. Uh, what I have here is the trailer hitch. And we're going to install that today. Alright, so when it comes to... When it comes to getting a trailer hitch for your car, don't try to do a general search. Get the exact trailer hitch for your exact vehicle. Don't try not to get a universal one. Ah, uh, like this was a hundred and forty-three dollars that I yeah a hundred no one hundred forty-six dollars off of eBay, and this specific. Uh, hitch is for my car. It's that like, it's not a universal one. Like the holes in here will exactly go with my car. All right, and that is unwrapped. That took a while. That took like 15 minutes to do. It was severely wrapped with bubble wrap. But let's not waste any more time and install this. Ugh. All right, so I apologize if I, I am that I am limited to the space I have when it comes to getting a better camera angle. That's the size. Ugh. Let's see if my favorite impact. Can't take care of this with ease. Oh, it's too rusted on there. That's too rusted on there. Alright, so the trailer hitch is on the car. And what happened was it took about 8 hours to put it on. The instructions said 40 minutes. I declare BS on that. Uh, it, did, it didn't take 8 hours to put it on, but to get... The bolts in, it took an additional like four hours to get a couple of bolts on just, just because the bolts were, bolts wouldn't go in all the way so I tried my best to uh, get them screwed in as far as possible. Two bolts did not do what they were supposed to do. And I wanted all the bolts on. So, oh, like about seven to eight bolts are uh, holding it to the frame of the body instead of ten. Which I was told you only need four, so I think I think we're good. So today we're gonna take it out. Uh, it is the next day, uh, so I, I had to do that before put the hitch on before work. It looks good. I like it. I uh, stood on it and I jumped. I jumped a little bit. Not nothing happened. So I'm hoping that this car is able to haul this boat today. Almost forgot. Don't forget to put your uh, the plug in. Now, like I said before, I will be bolting that on there, but just for today, because uh, the time, we're, I'm just going to put that on like that. Right now, if your if your boat isn't always out on the water, it is a good idea to test out the boat 
before you take it out. And just let that run for a little bit then, and it should be okay. All right, so I successfully got the hitch on, uh, the trailer onto the hitch. Uh, it was just a little too much back because the little angled piece of metal that's for the lock was already, was not in place. So I got that in place, so that's good. And I'm actually impressed with this. This actually isn't sitting too low. That's not that bad at all. I thought that would be, like this trim right here would be about right here. So that's actually pretty good. It's, it's doing a, a good job so far. So what I'm gonna bring with us is the tire inflator. I'm actually gonna put a different battery in it. Four amp hour, it's full charge. I'm gonna bring a vacuum with a three amp hour battery in it. Full charge. Ooh, I almost forgot. We're gonna bring the radio with a four amp hour battery in it. Full charge. This is also acts as, as another USB, USB adapter. We're gonna bring the inflator with a three amp hour battery, full charge. And we're gonna bring the power inverter with a six amp hour battery at full charge. And I think, I think that's all I need. I think that's all I need. Do I need anything else? No, 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 no. No. Nope, that's pretty much it. Let's load those to the boat. All right, so as you can see, I have uh, three fans going right now on, on the boat. We were in a little situation uh, yesterday, which was actually pretty fun all right so yesterday was a success to a certain extent the hitch is on very securely it's able to withstand the pressure uh or force of the boat bouncing up and down the trailer bouncing up and down while it's going over bumps and it it did it did a fantastic job what happened yesterday was is uh, a huge storm system came in and at the at the boat launch we were in a situation where we, we needed to wait because the storm was coming in and the boat launch was busy. And so uh, before we were able to get the boat out of the water it started to downpour immediately it wasn't just sprinkling here and there for a while i mean it the rain came at once so so yeah we were majorly drenched in uh, the the boat got like probably like about 10 gallons of water in it uh in a matter of 20 minutes and uh and yeah it was absolute absolutely crazy uh yesterday but we were the the four of us acted as a team we were able to get the boat out of the water as, as fast as possible, which it took like about probably four minutes to get out of the water when it comes to actually going to get the car, reversing it onto the ramp, putting the boat on the trailer, then leaving so other boaters could uh, get their uh, their watercraft out of the water as well. But, uh, but what I wanted to also talk about was, so, th thankfully the camera was... Uh, I took that to the car immediately because my wife handed me some bags, you know, and the camera was among them. But the stuff I brought with, which was the vacuum, the inflator, the inverter, the blower, uh, the power inflator, uh, 
what else did I bring? Anyways, they they got uh, drenched. They got soaked. And so, unfortunately, the only casualty that happened... No, the fortunately, the only casualty out of my Ryobi tools that happened is this battery got a lot of water in it. And it is not... As you can see, if I put the... Push the the power display button nothing shows up and this was full this was full, a full charge when I put it on the charger it'll charge but I think th this has too much water damage right now to to use I'm gonna take this apart and see if I could get the circuit board dry but uh, as you can see this was drenched you might as well th take this and throw it in the water it was that drenched and the battery as you can see, it's still it's still wet in there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, that still works. The power in, uh, the inverter gave me a little uh, heart attack yesterday because when I brought it inside and dried it up a little bit, it wouldn't start up. It wouldn't turn on. It would just the this light would be at a very it automatically came on would be at a very low dim. And this light stayed uh, red, uh, and then the both lights would turn off. And so I'm like, great, my power inverter died. And so I let that dry for a few more hours. The power inverter now works. This got majorly drenched. Uh, water just came spilling out of here and spilling out. It just it was bad. But this still works. Uh, the batteries all work. The fan works. The fan was drenched. I turned it on. I just tested it, and water just spewed out from. It was it was crazy. Uh, but yeah, this was my casualty so far, and I'm hoping that uh, if once this dries all the way, it would be okay. <laughs> So as you can hear and see right now, it's raining. Uh, I put the bolt cover back up. It is hot out there. Uh, what happened last year is this is one of the parts that melted on the engine when it overheated. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the heat gun and bend this back. So it's uh, I think it'll I think it'll bend back. It's not that thick of a plastic. So uh, this might be perfect for the job without overdoing it. So we are going to do that in an episode. So to see how well that heat gun performs in a real life task. So that's, that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, the, next, uh, the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to change the, uh, the prop on the boat. So, and that is going to be fun. I have to use this bad boy. So uh, that's pretty much it. So this is Dave Nicholas. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.